Hello and welcome! In this tutorial we are going to build a basic reaction time game. The whole idea is we're gonna try to react as fast as possible to the computer saying go. When the computer says go we're gonna press enter. So in order for this to be a surprise the computer is gonna wait a random amount of time print out go we're gonna press enter and then the computer is gonna print out we're gonna have a text output for what fraction of a second it took us. I'm already assuming it's never going to be more than a second, reasonably quick. So let's have a think about what needs to go into this program. So we're going to need to import a couple of things. We're going to need to import time because we want that random delay. And since I said random delay, we're going to need to import random. So I guess the, the game can start with a statement, print when I say go. Maybe, you know, instead of just the word go, we can have a bit of a statement. You hit enter. <laughs> Got it. All right bit of humor in there. Alright, so I think that's the premise. So how how can we make um, this reaction happen? Well, first of all, you want a random delay before saying go. Uh, maybe you even want to say get ready. So we, we can do a little delay here, time dot sleep one second and now we can print Something like, you know, ready, ready, time, dot, sleep. We can do ready, steady, go, but then there's a, there's a, a random delay before the go. Ready, print, steady. And then here comes the random delay. So there's going to be time dot sleep random dot rand int, and we want something like between I don't know two and five, two and five seconds. So ready, steady, and then I think we're missing a bracket because of that, and then we're going to print go. So I'm going to print go in a sort of noticeable way. So what did I do? One, two, go. Maybe we, maybe we add some one, two, three, four, five. Some more flair here. Now, how do we measure the amount of time it's elapsed before we hit enter? Well, this is just like a neat trick. We can just essentially um, have a, a, a a starting point for the clock so we can say tick I'll show you what I mean there is a import time there's a function that says time dot clock and this when you run it is just gonna have zero basically it'll be something you know 1.46 to the power negative 6 but when I call the function time the clock again it'll tell me how many seconds elapsed so when I call it again it'll be 12 so another five seconds if I call it quickly it'll only be another three and if I wait now obviously like with let me show you something 27 28 29 30 31 32 33 so that's how time.clock works. So all I need to do is take time.clock twice, subtract one from another. So tick can be equal to time.clock. Afterwards, after pressing enter, talk can be equal to time.clock. Obviously, I need to have those function brackets in both. And then time spent equals to talk minus tick and then we can print time spent 
So we just need a little trick here. How do we sense that enter has been pressed? How do we go from tick to tock? And the easiest thing to do actually is to just say that some variable is equal to input. It's, it's a trick, but it works beautifully. So there is no actual um, outside of using something like Pygame. There is no way to sense if a key's been pressed other than the input which waits for the enter. So I really think this should do it. Um, I'm going to run it one time and then maybe we'll clean up. But ready, steady. Oh, what did I do? That was 2.42 seconds. I don't know what happened there. Let's try that again. Ready, steady. Yep, yeah, 0.3 seconds. Not too bad, not too bad. So what we can do is... Your time was... Plus time spent, I guess. Plus seconds. Now you should maybe run it at this stage. It's going to have an error. But by now you should know how to fix that error. The error will, is going to be that that's an integer at this point. Sorry, it's a float. It's a number. And we need to convert that number to a string in order to print it out. So let's let's try this again. Yes. Okay, so it was under 0.3. So as you can see, it's a lot of fun to try and improve on this. I personally can only get as low as about 2.3. But I'm going to leave it at that for this tutorial. I'm going to break this in two halves. And in the next half, I'm going to make the game ask you how many rounds do you want to play and then when you've played that many rounds we're going to get the average so see you in the next tutorial when we do all that bye well that was fun to make sure you don't miss out on all the fun just subscribe right here to continue along with the playlist python fundamentals click there and to see a whole host of other python videos about there. That's all for now. See you later.